Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Barbara Stanwyck, Ray Milland, and Charles Corbin in The Lady Eve. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the Lux Radio Theater will be curtailed to 45 minutes so that we may all hear the President of the United States, Vice President Wallace, and Secretary of Agriculture, Wickard. Keep tuned to this station, and you will be sure to hear them. Now, compared to what Barbara Stanwyck does to Ray Milland in tonight's play, The Lady Eve, the woes of Adam seem like the life of Riley. Eve used an apple. Miss Stanwyck, aided and abetted by Charles Coburn, uses a deck of cards, a treacherous disguise, and a tropic moon. After what Barbara did with this blitzkrieg combination in the Paramount picture, Ray Milland should be forewarned of what's ahead of him tonight. But the Lady Eve gets her just desserts. She may be a card shop, but she's helpless when love deals aces from the bottom of the deck. This time every year, I take on a little extra job, one that seems to go very well with producing pictures and radio plays, and also with Lux Toilet Soap. Schools and colleges all over the country send photographs of the girls in their graduating classes and ask me to pick the most beautiful. A very simple request, but not easy to answer. At first glance, it usually looks like a tie. In those cases, I suspect that all the girls have been using Lux toilet soap since they were able to talk. And a girl can say, Lux, very young. Now the curtain and the first act of The Lady Eve, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Jean Harrington, Ray Milland as Charles Pike, and Charles Coburn as Colonel Harrington. He's coming on board now, Charles Pike. There he is, Myrtle, Charles Pike himself. Who's he, Mama? What do you care? He's worth a fortune and he's single. Go put on your shorts. The catch of the season is just coming aboard the steamship Southern Queen, anchored at the mouth of the Amazon. Returning from a scientific expedition in the Brazilian jungle, young and single Charles Pike climbs the ship's ladder, and every mother with an eligible daughter gives him a sickening smile. At the rail of the boat are Colonel Harrington and his daughter, Jean. The Colonel and Jean, however, are not interested in marrying the Pike fortune. They have a better way to get it. A very likely prospect, my dear. Yeah, I hope he thinks he's a wizard at cards. My fingers are itching already. Maybe I ought to go to the cabin and fix up a nice cold deck. I wish he had a fat white so I wouldn't have to dance in the moonlight with him. I don't know why it is, but a sucker always steps on your feet. A mug is a mug in everything. Well, I don't see why I have to do all the dirty work. There must be plenty of rich old dames just waiting for you to push them around. Don't be vulgar, Jean. Let us be crooked, but never common. Ah, here's Gerald. Gerald! Oh, there you are, sir. Well, Gerald, did you get the low down on him? Oh, yes, sir, I did. Sir. Come on, Gerald, forget the butler act. Is the sucker rich? As the person so picturesquely put it. The sucker is dripping with dough. Good. What does he own, Pike's Pea? Oh, no, 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 no. Pike's Pale, the ale that won for Yale. Bartender, another bottle of Pike's, please. Pike's Ale, please. Uh, two more Pike's Ale. Straighten your scenes, darling. Oh, why, of course, I mean, just ready, ready. Look at them ordering ale. Every dame at the bar is going to pass out with galloping hiccoughs. They don't seem to be making much of an impression on Mr. Pike. I think it's time you got acquainted with him, my dear. Look at that girl over to his left. Look over to your left, sucker. See those nice store teeth all beaming at you? No, nope, he doesn't like them. Now he's getting up to go. He's coming this way, Jean. Move your chair back, Harry. I'm going to trip him on his face. You think that's a good way to meet him? Well, nobody else is getting any place. Look out. Here he is. Oh! Oh! Oh, why don't you look where you're going? Why don't I look? 
You stuck out your foot. And... Look what you did to my shoe. You knocked the heel off. Oh, I did? Well, I'm certainly sorry. If you didn't, you can take me right down to my cabin for another pair of slippers. Oh, well, I guess it's the least I can do. By the way, my name is Pike. Oh, everybody knows that. Nobody's talking about anything else. This is my father, Colonel Harrington. My name is Gene. It's really Eugenia. My cabin's down this way. Come on. Say, this is quite a cabin you've got here. Yes. Pretty cozy, isn't it? Yeah. Say. Something burning? Holy Moses. What's the matter? <sighs> that perfume. What's the matter with it? Oh, nothing. It's just that I've been up the Amazon for a year and they don't use perfume. It smells good. Oh. The shoes are over here in the trunk. And because you were so polite, you can pick them out and put them on if you like. Put them on? You? Well, not on you. Go ahead. Holy Moses, look at all those shoes. <laughs> See anything you like? Yeah. Gosh, it doesn't seem possible for anybody to wear anything this size. Oh, oh that's pretty. Uh, you'll have to kneel down, Mr. Pike. Hmm? To put them on me. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> that's right. You know, you should have been a shoe salesman. <clears throat> Don't you feel well? Oh, I, I'm all right. Tell me, what were you doing up the Amazon? Uh, looking for snakes. I'm an ophiologist. I thought you were in the beer business. Beer? Ale. What's the difference? Between beer and ale? Yes. Listen, my father would burst a blood vessel if he heard you say that. There's a big difference. Ale sort of fermented on the top or something, and beer's fermented on the bottom, or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, there's no similarity at all. Oh. You know, it's, it's funny to be kneeling here at your feet talking about beer. You've probably heard a lot about it. Yes, all my life. Ever since I was six years old, the kids called me Hopsy. Hopsy Pike. Hello, Hopsy. Oh, make it Charlie, will you, please? All right. But there's something kind of cute about Hopsy. All finished? Yes. You know, uh, maybe you were right about the shoe business. I never realized before how lovely it could be. Oh, thank you. Well, uh... Well? <laughs> We'd better get back now. Yes, I guess so. You see where I've been, I mean, up the Amazon, I... I mean, when you haven't seen a girl in a long time, there's something about that perfume. Don't you like my perfume? <laughs> like it? I'm cockeyed on it. Why, Hopsy, you ought to be kept in a cage. Come along, Hopsy. Oh, there you are, my dear. Well, it certainly took you long enough to get back in the same dress. Mr. Pike wanted to hold hands. He's been up a river for a year. Oh, now, look, I am sorry if no, I... No, pay no attention to my daughter's ribaldry. It always comes out in the women of our family. The men are all missionaries, with the exception of myself. And what an exception. Won't you sit down, Mr. Pike? I've just been amusing myself with a little solitaire. Oh, cards. Oh, well, by the way, uh, have you seen this one? Now you see the card, and now you don't. Oh, he does card tricks. Well, bless my soul. Do that again, will you? Certainly. Now you see it. Now you don't. Amazing. Wonderful. You, you palm it in this hand. Of course, it takes a good deal of practice. Oh, I can well imagine it might. It's a good thing I know who you are, or I wouldn't play cards with you. Huh? Well, you know what they say, my boy. Gamblers on boats. Oh. Oh, oh! you don't really think that... Oh, of course not, silly. You look as honest as we do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Just joshing you, my boy. How about a rubber of bridge right now? Oh, I'd like to. Oh, you're probably much too good for us, Mr. Pike. Well, I don't have to play my best. Well, aren't you sweet? Who will we get for a fourth? Isn't there a three-handed game? I seem vaguely to remember having... Of course there is. Then it'll be much cozier. Will you shuffle? Well, I'll try. Now, let's see. I am not very good at this. There you are, my boy. At ten cents a point, I owe you $498. Oh, now, wait. I didn't want to win from you. Oh, Father's in the oil business, Mr. Pike. It just keeps bubbling up out of the ground. How much do I owe? Now, let me see. Roughly $100. That's rough enough. Oh, but look, I really feel... Oh, don't you worry. We'll get it back. Well, if that's a promise. You can depend on it. Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll toddle off and leave you young people to talk about uh, whatever young people talk about. Good night, sir. I'm really awfully sorry about this. Oh, beeswax, my boy, beeswax. Good night, Jeannie. Good night, darling. Good night. Now, he's a nice fellow, your father. He's a good card player, too. Uh, do you think so? Well, I don't want to be rude, but I thought he seemed a little uneven. He's more uneven sometimes than others. Well, that's what makes him uneven, of course. <laughs> yeah. But now you, on the other hand, with a little coaching, you could be terrific. Uh-huh. 
You really think so? Oh, yes. You have a definite nose. Well, I'm glad you like it. Do you like any of the rest of me? Oh, <laughs> well, what I meant was in the card playing sense. I know what you meant. I was just flirting with you. Oh. Oh, I... I see. You're not going to faint, are you? <sighs> Who, me? Oh, no, it's... It's that perfume. Oh. Did you think they're dancing any place on board? Don't you think we ought to get some rest? You can see me to my cabin if you want. Oh. You, you know, you're certainly a funny girl for anybody to meet who's been up the Amazon for a year. It's a good thing you weren't up there two years. Yeah. Come on. Say, I'm afraid you're on the wrong deck. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Well, for heaven's sake, here's my cabin. Fantastic! <coughs> Would you care to come in and see Emma? That's a new one, isn't it? All right, why not? Shh! I don't want to wake her up. Wake who up? Emma. Emma? Who's Emma? I thought that was just a gag. Well, technically, she's a Colombrina Marditzia, a rare type of Brazilian glass snake. A which... snake? Say, she seems to have gotten out of a box. She's out! No, no, don't, oh! don't worry. She's around here someplace. Oh! Be careful where you step. Oh, let me out of no, here! No, wait, listen. She's a playful as a kitten. Oh, come back! I'm terribly sorry. I wouldn't have frightened you for anything Why in the world. Why didn't you tell me you had a slippery crawl? But I crawly. thought you understood that Emma was a snake. How could I understand anything of the kind? Why should I suspect an apparently civilized oh, man? Look under the bed. Now, how could you possibly get oh, to your cabin? Oh, please, please. No, all right. What's this? Oh! Oh, it's just a stocking. Oh. Oh, well, if you see any more, just leave them there. Oh, come over here. Hold me tight. Oh. Oh, you don't know what you've done to me. Well, I, I'm terribly sorry. I I wouldn't have frightened you for anything in the world. I, I mean, if there's anyone in the world I wouldn't want to frighten, it's you. Oh, you're very sweet. Don't let me go. I, I won't. Thank you. Uh, how was everything up the Amazon? All right, thank you. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Are you always going to be interested in snakes? Well, snakes are my life in a way. What a life. I suppose it does sound sort of silly. I, I mean, I suppose I should have married and settled down. Well, why didn't you? Well, it's just that I've never met her. I suppose she's around somewhere in the world. Well, I suppose you know what she looks like and everything. I think so. How are her teeth? Hmm? Well, you should always pick one out with good teeth. It saves expense later. Oh, now you're kidding me. No, not badly. You have a right to have an ideal. I guess we all have one. What does yours look like? He's a little short guy with lots of money. Oh. Why short? What does it matter if he's rich? It's so he'll look up to me, so I'll be his ideal. It's a funny kind of reasoning. Yeah, well, look who's reasoning. And when he takes me out to dinner, he'll never add up the check, and he won't smoke greasy cigars or use grease on his hair, and, uh, oh, yes, he won't do card tricks. Oh. Well, I shouldn't think your kind of ideal was so difficult to find. Oh, he isn't. That's why he's my ideal. What's the use of having one if you can't ever find him? Well, when I marry, it's going to be somebody I've never seen before. I won't know what he looks like or where he'll come from or what he'll be. I... I want him to sort of take me by surprise. Like a burglar. Yes, that's right. And the night will be heavy with perfume, and I'll hear a step behind me and somebody breathing heavily. And then I... What's the matter? Hmm? You're looking sick again. Oh, no. I'm not. It's just you being so near you. I, I'd i like to be near you always. Why, Hop, are you proposing to me so soon? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Well, then you ought to be more careful. People have been sued for much less. Well, not by girls like you. Oh, don't you know it's dangerous to trust people you don't know very well? But I know you very well. No, no, I, I mean people you haven't known very long. Well, I've known you a long time. In a way. Jean. Jean. Good night. Huh? Oh, you better go. I, I think I can sleep peacefully now. Oh, I wish I could say the same. Why, Hopsy! Ah, uh, thank you, Gerald. High card cuts are on the outside, cold hands in the middle. 
cold hands I love. Hello, Harry. Hello, Gerald. Hello, Jean. Greetings, my little minx. I hope I find you well and that your little pal hasn't fallen overboard. He's all right. He's just gone to dress for dinner. Then I think, my dear, you'd better do the same. Because we are going to play a little cards tonight, and I don't mean old maid. Harry, I think Charles is in love with me. No. Of course he's in love with you. Who is he not to be in love with you? No, I mean on the level, Harry. Are you suggesting that the others were on the bias? Oh, stop kidding. <laughs> you see, I like him, too. Well, why shouldn't you like him? There's as fine a specimen of the sucker sapiens as I've ever seen. I think he's going to ask me to marry him. No, no. Yes. But that's wonderful, Jean. We shall play high card tonight. He won't know an ace from a deuce. You weren't thinking of taking him, Harry. Well, what were you thinking of? Oh, I don't think you understand. This is on the up and up. I, I'm in love with the poor fish. And I want to be exactly the way he thinks I am, the way he'd like me to be. I'm sure that's very noble, Jean. And I wish you all the happiness in the world. And you'll go straight, too, won't you, Harry? Straight to where? <laughs> you know what I mean. You can come and live with us. Think how peaceful you can be. Playing cribbage with Gerald? I can just see myself. You tend to your knitting. I'll play the cards. Not with him. Do you happen to remember that that sucker has $600 of ours in his pocket? Well, I suppose you could take that back. You bet I could, and a little dividend along with it. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Yes. No. And that settles it. Children don't respect their parents anymore. <laughs> Enough, Colonel. I'll make you a check for what I owe you. No, 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 my boy. I, I wish you wouldn't do that. Here, we'll cut the cards once more. Double or nothing. No, no thanks. I'd rather pay 32000 than lose a really large amount. Well, now, this is very embarrassing. Make it out to cash. It could even be more embarrassing. $32,000 and no cents. Here you are, sir. I feel terrible, my boy. Oh, by the way, I'd prefer if you wouldn't tell Jean anything about this. You may depend upon it. You certainly may. Jean. My sweet. Charles, you promised me you wouldn't play anymore. Well, we didn't play anymore, Jean. We were just wiping out my loss. You need a keeper. And now, Father, that you've taught Charles not to play double or nothing, what are you going to do with that check? Just this, my pretty child. I shall tear it up. You mean it was just a joke? Of course. You don't actually think I'd bleed my own daughter's friend, do you? Perish the thought. Come on, Charles. You can take me for a walk on deck. <laughs> Oh, the air is good, isn't it? It makes you feel all clean inside and nice. Yes. Jean, don't move. What is it? You know, I've just understood something. Yes? It came over me all of a sudden. I, I'm in love with you, Jean. I've never loved anyone but you. I know that sounds as dull as a drugstore novel, but it's what I feel. I wish we were married and on our honeymoon right now. Oh, so do I. But it isn't as simple as all that, Hopsy. I'm terribly in love, and you seem to be too, so... One of us has to think and try and keep things clear. Maybe I can do that better than you can. They say a moonlit deck is a woman's business office. I'm going to kiss you, Jean. Of course you are, darling. Of course, it's none of our business, Mr. Pike, but I said to Myrtle, I said, I don't care for those people. Mrs. Bullock, what are you trying to tell me? What are you talking about? The Harringtons. Myrtle, show Mr. Pike what we got from the purser's office, dear. Yes, Mama. You see, Mr. Pike? It's a photograph, and there's something on the back. Listen. Handsome Harry Harrington and his daughter, Jean, professional card shops. Let me see that. It's the Harringtons, all right. Also bunco, oil wells, and occasional gold mines. Card shops. We're sorry we had to tell you, Mr. Pike, but it's for your own good, of course. And like I said... May Mr. I keep I... this picture? Uh, you certainly. And if you would Thanks, like... Thanks, goodbye. Uh, oh, Mr. Pike, will you have dinner with us tonight? No, I will not. <gasps> Why, the ungrateful... Mama, but... I thought you said he'd be glad to hear about it. Shut up! Straight scotch, double. Yes, sir. Why, Hopsy, what 
are you doing at the bar at this hour? Good morning. Good morning, darling. You look like the last grave over near the willow. Are you worried about something? Should I be? Of course you should, falling in love with an adventuress on the high seas. Are you an adventuress? Of course I am. All women are. If you waited for a man to propose to you from natural causes, you'd die of old maidenhood. Jean. Yes, darling? You'd better take a look at this photograph. Oh. Rotten likeness, isn't it? I never did care for that picture. I can understand that. Oh, please don't look so upset, darling. I was going to tell you when we got to New York. I, I would have told you last night only. Well, you never know how a person will take a thing like that. And, well, maybe I wanted you to love me a little more, too. You believe me, don't you? Anyway, I'm glad you got the picture this morning instead of last night. You thought you were having a lot of fun with me, didn't you? Oh, I was having a lot of fun with you, Hopsy. More fun than I've ever had with anybody. You were certainly very funny showing Harry how to palm a card. You were pretty funny yourself. When? Trying to play me for a sucker when they told me who you were the morning after I met you. Who told you? Never mind who told me. You mean you, you were playing me for a sucker? I don't believe it. But if you were, if you were just trying to make me feel cheap and hurt me, you succeeded handsomely. You ought to be very proud of yourself, Mr. Pike. Very proud of yourself. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Barbara Stanwyck, Ray Milland, and Charles Coburn, will bring us Act Two of The Lady Eve. And now we place our imaginary microphones on a rehearsal stage over at Columbia Studios, where two young extras are just finishing a dance routine. I feel like a wilted lettuce leaf. <laughs> that certainly was a workout. And me with a date tonight. Me too. Say, we better get going. What we need is time for a nice, warm, soothing bath. Mary, isn't that Rita Hayworth over there? Boy, she looks like a million, doesn't she? She sure does. And after the hours she danced in that ballroom scene today. Well, we're not the only ones who know what a nice, relaxing Lux toilet soap bath can do for a gal. Yes, lovely Rita Hayworth and other Hollywood stars use their complexion soap, gentle white Lux toilet soap, for their daily beauty bath, too. Try this Hollywood beauty bath, and you'll see why. You'll find Lux soap's creamy, active lather soothing and gentle and thorough too that rich caressing lather just floats away every trace of dust and dirt leaves you feeling exquisitely fresh from head to foot and most important of all you'll find as screen stars do that this beauty bath makes daintiness sure lovely rita hayworth says a daily lux soap beauty bath protects daintiness it leaves skin really fresh and sweet fragrant too with a delicate clinging perfume why not take Hollywood's tip? Make this fine white soap with its flower-like fragrance your daily bath soap. It's a luxury that any woman can afford. For Lux toilet soap costs but a few cents a cake. Buy it the economical three cakes at a time way. It's thrifty. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Starring Barbara Stanwyck as Jean Harrington, Ray Milland as Charles Pike, and Charles Coburn as Colonel Harrington.
Jean is not the kind of girl to grieve over a blighted romance, but she still thinks occasionally of Charles Pike. It's two months later, and her father at the racetrack, Jean imagines that she sees Charles in the crowd. Here you are, my sweet. We grabbed down and each 700 on the last counter, Jean. Jean, I'm talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was that Pike fellow over there. Now, let me see. What do you like in the next one? Pardon me, is this seat taken? Well, for the love of... Well, bless my soul, handsome Harry. William at the moment. William, of course. I'm enchanted to see you again. And you, Jean, as pretty as a bag of aces. Hello, Pearly. Sir Alfred at the moment, my child. Sir Alfred McLennan Keith, at your service. How do you do, Sir Alfred? Well, you're certainly a sight for lame peepers. You know, I haven't seen anybody of our set since the boat stopped running. What's your pitch, Pearly? I have a little nest on the edge of a town called Bridgefield. A town full of millionaires in the heart of the contract bridge mill. Bridgefield, Connecticut? Precisely. Wonderful pickings. Tell me, do you know the Pikes? Do I know them? I positively swill in their ale. Good old Horace. Oh, 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 what a card player. Do you know Charles, the son? Is he the tall backward boy who's always toying with toads? Yes, I think I've seen him sculping about. He isn't backward. He's a scientist. Who oh, is that what it is? I knew he was peculiar. Pearly, could I visit you sometime as your niece? As my niece? My dear girl, there's only one thing. You have to be English. Well, I've been English before. I shall be as English as necessary. Why don't you stop talking nonsense? Because I want to see that Pike guy. I've got some unfinished business with him. Can I come, Pearly? Of course, my dear, if you think you can get away with it. You can't, Jean. That snake charmer will spot you in a minute. No, he won't. He may suspect, but he'll never know. Get me a name, Pearly, but British. As a matter of fact, I've mentioned a niece. One Lady Eve Sidwich. Lady Eve Sidwich. Oh, I can see her in the Pike's drawing room now. Old Bridgefield at her feet. Lady Eve Sidwich. Boy, will that ring the bell. <laughs> Go on, Lady Eve. Tell us some more. Well, when I arrived in New York, I wanted to find Uncle Alfred, of course, but I didn't know where he was. All I could remember was that he had said Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good evening, Sir Alfred. Oh, Horace, old boy, I want you to meet my niece, Lady Eve Sidwich. How are you, Lady Sidwich? This is Mr. Pike Eve, Mr. Horace Pike, our host. How'd you do? <laughs> My niece was telling rather an amusing incident, Horace. <laughs> well, go on, please. Thank you. Now, where was I? Uh, you didn't know where Connecticut was. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I took the tube. <laughs> <laughs> the tube? The subway, old boy. Yes, and to the official I said, be so good as to let me off at Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, lady, I don't know where Connecticut is, but this train goes to Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know how he knew I was a lady. <laughs> oh, uh, here's my son, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Yes, Father. Oh, uh, Charlie, I want you to meet Lady Eve Sidwich. How do you do? How do you do, Lady Eve? Oh. So nice to see you. Oh, but, but, but oh. What's the matter, son? Who, me? Oh, uh, Is he ill? Charles, what's wrong? Uh, no, no, nothing. I, I mean, well, well, I mean to say, haven't we met? But of course we have. Your father just introduced us. Aren't you feeling well, Charles? Oh, sure, but I, I mean... Oh, I... I'm so sorry. You meant, of course, hadn't you met me before someplace? Uh, yes. Oh, very probably. Let me see. Where could it have been? Uh, Deauville? Uh, no. Biarritz? No. Well, then I give up. It couldn't have been on the southern queen between here and South America, could it? I'm afraid not. You see, I've never been in South America. You've never been in South America? As a matter of fact, I've never been in North America until about three days ago. Oh, you haven't? Well, then, you weren't on the southern queen. Say, what's the matter with you? Oh, well, I I'm sorry. Oh, were you in love with her? Yes, he was in love with her. But he doesn't remember what she looked <laughs> like. Don't let them tease you. You can tell me all about her. <laughs> yeah. Dinner is served. Ah, dinner. May I take you in? Oh, ripping. Thank you. This way, then, we... Uh... Uh, be careful. Oh! Oh! Are you hurt? No, I I just tripped over the sofa. Oh, look, you have all divs all over your shirt. Yes, I'll have to go up and change. Oh, yes, you are a little sticky. Uh, now, look, son, you haven't uh, been hitting the bottle lately, have you? Oh, of course he hasn't. Anybody's apt to trip. Not over a sofa. 
That sofa's been there for 15 years. No one ever fell over it before. Oh, well, now the ice is broken. You go upstairs, Charles, take a bath, and I'll like you just as much as ever. Toodaloo. So long. Excuse me. Thank you. Be careful! Oh! He did it again. I've never seen such a farce in a respectable house. If I didn't hate him so much, I would have felt sorry for him last night. Do you know why he didn't recognize me? Yeah, I think so. No, you don't. I hardly recognized him myself. He seems shorter and bonier. It's because we don't love each other anymore. On the boat, I saw him as very tall and very handsome. And he probably thought I had big melting eyes and a rosebud mouth and a figure like Miss Longbeach. <laughs> and so you have, for that matter. Well, now that you've got him, what are you going to do with him? Finish what I started. I'm going to dine with him, dance with him, swim with him, laugh at his jokes, uh, canoodle with him. And then one day, about six weeks from now, he'll propose. But you won't accept Ho Oh, yes. That's part of the plan. Gee! I know just how it will happen. We'll be out riding and we'll come to a view that will be so gorgeous, we'll have to get off our horses to admire it. I think that's when he'll kiss me. <laughs> Charles, isn't it lovely? Let's get off, shall we? Oh, right ho. Here, let me help you. Thank you. <gasps> Why, Charles, you kissed me. Yes, I did. Eve. Yes, Charles? Eve, I suppose you know what I'm thinking about. Uh -huh. I have an idea. The union of two people for life, that is marriage, shouldn't be taken lightly. Oh, how wise you are, Charles. I think that if... If there's one time in your life to be careful, to weigh every pro and con, this is the time. Oh, yes, yes. You can't be too careful. That's right. Now, you might think that having known you such a short time... Oh, I, I feel I've known you always. That's the way I feel about you. Charles. Eve, darling. I don't need to tell you of the doubts I've had, but I want you to marry me. Oh, Eve, you're so beautiful. You're so fine. You're so, so... Oh, I don't deserve you. Oh, but you do, Charles. If anybody ever deserves me, you do. Richly. Eve. Charles. Here's a telegram, Gerald. I have caught the sucker sapien. Leaving for Miami on honeymoon tonight. I still despise him. Love, Jean. If she hates him, why did she marry him? To teach him a lesson or something? I don't know. Maybe she's going to shoot the beggar. Comfortably? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, it's nothing. It's just that it's so different. It reminds me of that other time. Oh, what time was that? Oh, goodness. I must be a little bit hysterical. You see, we didn't have any money, so we went third class, and there was a farmer on the opposite bench with a cheese in his lap. Oh, it was very unromantic. Oh, where were you going? We eloped. Who eloped? Me. Oh, it was really nothing, darling. I was only 16 at the time. I'm sorry I even mentioned it. Let's pretend I didn't, hmm? Who did you elope with? Oh, now I've planted a seed in your mind. Are you sure you want to know? Who was it? Oh, Angus. Angus? Oh, I assure you, darling, he was no one of the slightest importance. He, he, he was just a groom on Father's estate. A groom? Well, not really the groom, of course. He, he used to put on the groom's uniform on his day off, and then he'd be the groom that day. The rest of the time, he was just a stable boy. A stable boy? Yes. The boy who cleans up the stable. Oh, now you're upset. But it was nothing, darling, nothing at all. We ran away, but they caught us and brought us back, and that's all there was to it, except uh, they discharged him. Good. And when they brought you back, it was before nightfall, I trust? Oh, no. You were out all night? Oh, my dear, it took them weeks to find us. <laughs> you see, we'd made up different names all the time. Oh, you'd die laughing at some of the names we thought of. I'm sure I would. Oh, now you're upset. 
Dad. Well, who wouldn't be? Oh, Charles! Charles, please stop pacing back and forth. You're making me dizzy. Eve, listen to me. Yes, dear. Eve, if there's one thing that distinguishes a man from a beast, it's the ability to understand, and understanding forgive. Surely the qualities of mercy, understanding, and sweet forgiveness... Sweet what? Sweet forgiveness! Oh, yes, yes, go on, darling. I won't conceal from you that I wish this hadn't happened, but it has. And I want to thank you for being so frank. The name of Angus will never cross my lips again, and I hope that you will do likewise. Oh, Charles, I knew you'd be that way. I knew you'd be both husband and father to me. I knew I could confide in you. Thank you. I wonder if now would be the time to tell you about Herman. Herman? Herman? Who's Herman? <laughs> and that's all. I said goodbye to Vernon the next day. Vernon? I thought you said Herman. Vernon was Herman's friend. What a friend. <laughs> Now it's Cecil! Cecil! Darling, it's pronounced Cecil! What did you say, dear? I said, which one are you talking about now, Hubert or Herbert? Well, I, I, I'm not sure. You see, they were John's twin cousins. John, who in the name of... Let me out of here! What's the matter with you, Jean? They want to make a settlement. His father's on the phone right now. Tell him I don't want to talk. Hello? No, no, no. Yes. Hold on, Gerald. Hold on. Now listen, Gene. They'll give you half when you leave for Reno and the balance at the end of six weeks. For once, we have a chance to make some honest money. Oh, tell him to go peel an eel. I don't think you realize the beauty of your situation. You're holding a royal flush. You've got him right by the ears, Gene. You know I had nothing to do with this arrangement, but now that you're in it, you might as well go all the way. All right, I will. Give me the phone. That's the girl. Here you are. Hello. Mr. Pike, this is Eve. I, uh, I'm awfully sorry about the trouble I've made. I thought I had a reason, but now I... Well, I just wanted to tell you this. I don't want any money. Jeannie. I don't want anything. He can have back his jewelry and anything else there is. My own daughter knifing me in the back. There's only one thing I do want, Mr. Pike. I, I want to see him first, and I, I want him to ask me to be free. That's all. No money, no nothing, but there's something I want to say to him before we part. What? He's already gone? Gone where? Havana. Oh, I see. Thank you, Mr. Pike. Well, you certainly fixed it. Hurry, get your things packed. I refuse to go to Reno with you. Reno? We're going to Havana. <laughs> I don't see him, my dear. Do you suppose he missed the boat? He didn't miss it. There he is at the bar. Well, oh, yeah. Now he's turning away. He's coming over here. Do you suppose he's seen us? He will in a minute. Stick out your foot, my dear. Oh! Oh, oh why don't you look? Why, Hopsy! Jean, what are you... Oh, Jean. Hello, my boy. What Hello. a surprise, Hopsy! Oh, Jean, if you only knew what it means to me to find you again, can we go to your cabin or someplace, huh? Now, just a minute. Oh, Colonel, I'm delighted to see you again, too. We must play cards this trip. Lots and lots of cards. Come on, Jean, come on. Hopsy. Oh, Jean, I'm going to kiss you. Hopsy, darling. Oh, why didn't you take me in your arms that day on the boat? Why did you let me go? Don't you know you're the only man I ever loved? Don't you know I waited all my life for you, you big mug? Will you forgive me, Jean? For what? Oh, you mean on the boat. Well, the question is, can you forgive me? What for? Oh, you still don't understand, do you? We'll have to have a long talk. I don't want to understand. I don't want to know. Whatever it is, keep it to yourself. All I know is I adore you. But there's just one thing I feel it's only fair to tell you. It would never have happened except that you looked so exactly like you. And I have no right to be in your cabin. Why? Because I'm married. But so am I, darling. So am I. In 
a moment, our stars will return for their curtain call. And after that, the president will be on the air. But first, here's a young lady who just had a bright idea. Hands up, Bill. Hey, Ruthie, what's this? <laughs> just a skein of wool for that service sweater I'm making you. And you can help me wind it. Here, let me slip it over your wrist. Now I'll start winding. There, see how fast it goes? Oh, don't hurry. This is a break for me. Why, I can just sit here and look at you. Oh, gosh, honey, but you're pretty. Well, that's how it is with Lux girls. You know, there's something quite irresistible about a fresh, lovely complexion. A lovely Lux toilet soap complexion. And clever girls don't take chances with this charm. They use gentle Lux toilet soap regularly. They know what this fine white soap can do to help keep skin soft and appealing. For Lux toilet soap has rich, active lather that removes stale cosmetics and every trace of dust and dirt from the skin. Here's the active lather facial our pretty Lux girl depends on. Never neglects a single day. I pat the creamy Lux soap lather lightly in, rinse with warm water, then a dash of cool, and pat with a soft towel to dry. My skin feels so beautifully smooth afterwards. Try this Lux Toilet Soap Beauty Facial for 30 days. See what it can do to make your complexion lovelier. Remember, famous screen stars use this simple care. It's right for delicate skin. Get three cakes of smooth white Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. We've said goodbye to the Lady Eve, but here come Barbara Stanwyck, Ray Milland, and Charles Coburn for a curtain call. Thank you, C.B. It's grand being back again. You know, I was rather glad to see Ray getting that rough treatment tonight. There's a pal for you. What'd I ever do to you, C.B.? <laughs> well, I just thought that after you had spanked Paulette Goddard, thrown her overboard, and put her through a hurricane and reaped the wild wind, you had a little punishment coming from the fair sex. The heroine really seems to take a beating in all those DeMille pictures, Barbara. I should know, Charles. I went through it once. I never hit a lady in my life until I worked for him, Barbara. Well, don't make it a habit, Ray. It isn't something women are sure to enjoy, like, well, like Lux Soap, for instance. I may have said this before, C.B., but it'll stand repeating. I think Lux Soap is wonderful for the complexion. I've used it for years. Like old friends, Barbara. Lux Soap never fails. What have you got on the schedule for next Monday, C.B.? Just about a thrill a minute, Charles. Because our play is the Warner Brothers hit, Manpower. And starring in it will be Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, and George Raft. It's an action-packed drama of the courageous men who work on the power lines of a nation. A story of the manpower behind the electric power and the woman power behind the manpower. The high-tension cast is headed by Marlena Dietrich, George Raft, and Edward G. Robinson. That should mean standing room only, C.B. I certainly won't miss it. And it's just about time for President Roosevelt, Vice President Wallace, and Secretary Wickard to speak now. So we better get a comfortable seat and get ready to hear them. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents George Raft, Edward G. Robinson, and Marlena Dietrich in Manpower. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Barbara Stanwyck will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, The Great Man's Lady, and Ray Milland in The Lady Has Planned. The picture, Lady Eve, was written and directed by Preston Sturgis, whose current picture is Sullivan's Travels, starring Joel McRae and Veronica Lake. Heard in tonight's play were Keith Hitchcock as Sir Alfred, Eric Snowden as Gerald, Ferdinand Munier as Pike, and Verna Felton, Thomas Mills, Doris Cederholm, and Warren Ash. Tune in next Monday night to hear Marlena Dietrich, Edward G. Robinson, and George Raft in Manpower. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>